After the New York Jets signed Tyron Smith and running and uh, wide receiver Mike Williams, it's been a little bit crickets, but there will be some more signings. Who are they going to sign next? Javian Clowney has had the quietest visit with the New York Jets. Uh, I was on with Jake Gadsden on Wednesday. He had some intel that the visit went well. We don't know what's going on with Clowney. And to start with him, um, I'm not going to do the whole like Bryce Huff versus Clowney thing. To me, like Huff is gone. That decision is over. It is what it is. Uh, so just Clowney by himself, I think, would be a good addition to this team. And I think this team has had a really good offseason. So I'm sweating Bryce Huff left less now that we got Tyron Smith. We got a backup quarterback. We got a wide receiver. We got uh, five offensive line starters. But, and we still have the 10th overall pick in the draft. Now, Clowney, he's streaky as a pass rusher. But, man, he, he always gives you nasty run defense and every other year he pops as a pass rusher so uh, we're due for a down year i guess technically but look man he's coming off of a nine and a half sack 71 pressure season with plus plus run defense the last jets edge that did that like play the jeopardy music you tell me you probably have to go back to john abraham i mean was john abraham a good run defender I don't know. I had his jersey in third grade. I knew he was great. He was a great pass rusher. I don't remember if John Abraham was really good against the run. But Clowney comes in, and, there, and there's room for Clowney. Look, the Jets uh, had Carl Lawson and Michael Clemens out there for a combined 600, or, or I'm sorry, 467 snaps. Okay, and now Bryce Huff and his snaps depart. So, and Will McDonald's not going to take up his own snaps plus Bryce Huff snaps last year. So there would be room in this defense for Jadavian Clowney. And he is one of the best football players that's left on the markets. And the Jets have been after him for a while. Um, teams are always one to let him go. Uh, I get that. And he's never lived. He's kind of been a victim of his draft pedigree, right? Because he, you know, he had the great career at uh, South Carolina, top five pick. And I guess never really quite lived up to that. Never had the ceiling as Khalil Mack and, um, I think Aaron Donald and Ola Beckham Jr. were in that that stacked draft class, so never quite lived up to the draft pick, but he's been a really damn good football player. And yeah, Jadavion Clowney on a one-year deal with all the other needs that have been met. I don't see why not. This regime is always going to invest more in edge than than we think. We That's been abundantly apparent with the drafting of Jermaine Johnson and Will McDonald back-to-back years in the first round. So Clowney, sign me up. Why not? Uh, according to Jake, who again, he, he had the scoop that it was going to be a sack related incentive based deal if he did sign with the Jets. So he's the guy who's in for a visit. Now, in terms of the next spot, I would look, you know, honestly, uh, if there's a spot that can move the needle the most, right? We love that phrase this time of year. I don't know if it isn't safety. Now, I don't think the Jets are ever going to make a, like Justin Simmons is a free agent, right? Kyle Duggar's on the transition tag. Quandre Diggs is out there. Eddie Jackson is older. But if I'm looking at this roster and, and, and the guys who are available and the free agent money at safety this offseason has not been crazy. There's been really good football players getting five, six, seven million dollars a year. Obviously, Chuck Clark is back on a one-year do- deal coming back from the ACL. Tony Adams who I was a huge fan of Tony Adams when he, coming out of Illinois. I loved his film in Illinois. Uh, I think he showed towards the back end of last year he could be a competent safety in the NFL. But I think his overall 2023 film was a below was still a below average starting safety. And then Chuck Clark, who I, again, I oh man. Chuck Clark, I was so pumped when we got him, but now closer to 30 than you'd like off the ACL. Ashton Davis, still a free agent. And then Jared Bernard Converse basically had a redshirt year. So you add one, you add someone like Justin Simmons to this defense. <laughs> yeah, he changes things, man. He really does. That might be the most needle moving spot to move uh, at this point in the off season. If we don't end up with Clowney. I mean, Calais Campbell is still out there, but I, I think it would be on the edge. I think the interior is pretty set. Now the next spot, I would look is probably a swing tackle. Now I do wonder if David Bakhtiari would, would be willing to sign just a straight up 
backup deal at this point. Maybe one like Tyron Smith with less guaranteed money, but it's just based on how many games that you you play. So that way, whatever, you end up spending 16, 17 million between the two of them, up to 20 million, but you're getting like Pro Bowl left tackle play between the two of them, right? Because you're only paying as you go. If David Bakhtiari is willing to do that, I would do that. I didn't want David Bakhtiari in a sense that, boom, he's our left tackle. And then when he gets hurt, here comes Carter Warren. Good luck, Aaron Rodgers. But now that you got Tyron Smith in the fold, um, and then you'd be two, like a, a Smith and Bakhtiari injury away from rolling out Carter Warren and Max Mitchell. I mean, could Bakhtiari and Tyron Smith combine for 15 games played and you, and you deal with Carter Warren for two games and, and it costs you a total of 18 million based on incentives? Fine. That's the thing about both Smith and, and Bakhtiari. They're injury prone, but they're not they're not washed. Washed means you can't play anymore. When both Smith and Bakhtiari have been on the field recently, they've both still been top five at their position. So I'm interested in that. The rest of the 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 swing tackle market, like Donovan Smith is, dude. Donovan Smith was so bad. I can't believe that he was a starting left tackle on a Super Bowl winning team. Well, the Chiefs are allowed to hold, so that doesn't that doesn't help us out here. Um, James Hurst, I would be interested in James Hurst as a as a depth offensive lineman because he can play three spots, and he's been a starter as recently as the beginning of last year. I would like James Hurst. He would be my number one target as a free agent depth offensive lineman. Uh, Jonathan Jones was just signed. And I mean, Mekhi Beckton, I think that ship has sailed. You know, if he wants to take swing tackle money, fine. But I just think that ship has sailed between him and the team. Interior offensive line depth. Yeah, there's guys like Andres Pete and Dalton Reisner. I think it's Cody Whitehair. I still think could probably think after the draft, maybe they sign somewhere where they can compete to start. But I would bring Connor McGovern back as a backup. Why not? As another $2 million deal. That's how I would address the offensive line. David Bakhtiari and Connor McGovern. I know that's not like anything to write home about, but it's depth at this point. Lake and Tomlinson is still a, a free agent for those who are wondering. And then um, running back two. Uh, it's funny. <laughs> it's funny because I made a video about Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, the other day, just like, Hey man, should we sign Zeke? And I don't think there's ever been more of a resounding, like some people were like, yeah, why not? And then half the comments were like, no, F no, never. Oh my, how could you suggest this? <laughs> Three people actually unsubscribe from the channel just for me floating out there. It's so weird how certain players get, it's like a mind virus, right? Like you see this with, um, with Hopkins last year. No, why give me data? Oh, like it's, it just doesn't make any sense. If I were to tell you, if I were to tell you, hey, if I were to tell you like Ezekiel Elliott's skills and like stats the past two years, and then say, hey, you want to sign that guy for like three million bucks? You'd be like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Hey, you want a guy who blocks? Yeah. You want a guy who's efficient in short yardage? Yeah. You want a guy who runs hard instead of Dalvin Cook making business decisions? Yeah. You want a guy on the cheap? Yeah. You want a guy who doesn't fumble? Yeah. You want a guy who doesn't drop passes? Sure. You want Zeke Elliott? No. <laughs> Who cares? It's a running back too. Who gives a crap, man? You don't like you don't like his nose ring. No, not one shred of data of why like Ezekiel Elliott would be the downfall of the Jets franchise. He was the better fit last year beside uh, over Dalvin Cook for all those reasons. He can block. He doesn't drop passes. He doesn't fumble. He doesn't do net negatives for the team. Right? He probably averaged like three point nine yards a carry and get you some tough yards, and then that would be that. But the rest of the, the veteran running back market isn't great. J.K. Dobbins, is, I like J.K. Dobbins a lot, but he has his injury history is pretty brutal. And then it's like Joshua Kelly and Clyde Clyde Edwards Alaire, Kareem Hunt. Um, so Zeke Elliott is probably the best fit of the guys who are left. Um, now maybe they want to double dip at now tight end three. I just think tight end three is going to be a competition between Kenny Aboa and Zach Koontz. You know, tight end three is really because they didn't carry. Well, unless maybe the Nick Bodden experiment is done and they want to roster four tight ends, then maybe they'll, they would invest in, an, in a tight end three and then have, you know, Yaboa or Koontz for tight end four. But as it stands, you have Conklin and Ruckert as your number one and number two tight ends. And that third tight end is more of a special teams developmental spot they don't want to spend any money on. So I'd be surprised if they signed a, a veteran tight end of note. Logan Thomas, Thomas and CJ Uzama are like the top tight ends on the market. So that's probably just going to be 
Yaboa or Coons. Maybe they would double dip at veteran wide receiver, um, especially if they don't get Clowney and they have some more money to um, play with. Tyler Boyd, he's still there. He still is a competent high-end wide receiver three who is better than Lazard. Um, Josh Reynolds, I would say the same thing about Odo Beckham Jr. Yeah, I, did, I didn't want him last year. I didn't. It's all about the role and the price. Odo Beckham Jr. last year, he's going to be 1A, 1B with Garrett Wilson, pay him 15, 18 million. No, hard pass. Odo Beckham, if he wants to take six, seven million, if he wants to take the deal like Hollywood Brown took for seven million and be the third wide receiver, look, I'm telling you, Odo Beckham Jr. is better than Alan Lazard. I don't even, it's not even an opinion, right? He can catch a pass. He can catch a pass and then do a thing with it after the pass. Alan Lazard can't do any of that. So yeah, Beckham and Beckham can play all three positions. Um, but I don't see that. I mean, and he's visiting with Miami and he was on a podcast where he kind of talked poorly about how the Jets handled his free agent visit. So I think maybe that bridge is burned. Um, I don't know if you want to jump through a bunch of hoops for, for a wide receiver three, but yeah, I think Boyd and Josh Reynolds are the best bets at this point. Hunter Renfro, maybe he's got something left in the tank. DJ Chark is like a depth receiver who's got some speed, but has missed some time. Marcos Velda Scantling. I mean, why? Seriously, why? He's terrible. Uh, and then it's like the, the geez, like Michael Thomas, Michael Gallup. I mean, at this point, I think Tyler Boyd, Josh Reynolds, and Odo Beckham Jr. are the only players that you would sign and be like, all right, these, these are starting caliber players. Like these, these, these guys could start in 11 personnel and would keep Lazard on the bench. Um, these other guys, is Hunter Renfro even better than Al Lazard at this point? Hunter Renfro has done nothing for two years. So I don't know about him. Defensively, the only spot I can really think of is that's not clowny is um safety. You're not gonna sign a corner of note. You're not gonna sign a linebacker of note, most likely. Interior defensive line, I don't see it. So if it's not clowny, I mean you have Emmanuel Agba, Marcus Golden, Bud Dupree. Um, and then Carl Lawson is, I mean, Lawson, he, he's a really good dude. I was excited about that signing. He had a great 2020, but he looked done last year. Lawson looked toast. Unfortunately, the injuries seem to have catch, caught up to him. So we'll see who Joe Douglas signs next. Maybe it'll be Jadavia and Clowney. I think that would be in a good move for the Jets. Super Chat Mike D, 20 bucks, man. Sending me into the weekend. <coughs> With some some beer money, some gas money. You appreciate that, brother. You've been very generous lately, man. Hope you're doing well. Uh Clowney would be would help the run D and pass rush. Agree. Zeke at running back too. Agree. Simmons at safety. All right. See, see, we're on the same page, man. Now you probably couldn't do all three. Well, Zeke, you could do. You could do Zeke and then either Clowney or Simmons. I think if it came down to, to it, I might do Clowney. I just want to have the nastiest pass rush in the NFL. <laughs> I'd probably do Clowney, even though Simmons would be more of a need based on our roster. Also get O-line depth and go BPA in the draft. We would be absolutely loaded overall. Good move so far. We're looking good. Yeah, man, the roster is in pretty good shape, you know? As crazy as it is to say, as bad as, you know, as tough as last year was, because we were dead last in the NFL in point differential. You know, that's why when people say, hey, well, you won seven games of bad quarterback play, and I'm like... Yeah, I hear that. But you got to remember, we were dead last in point differential, <clears throat> and we were like 30 more points away in net negative net points than the second to last team. <coughs> so overall, we were kind of the worst team in the NFL last year. From that uh, from that perspective, like I, I think point differential is almost more of a like wins are what matter, but point in terms of process and, and how to judge like your overall teams, like maybe talent level. Um, but obviously I think it was just because we were, we had the worst quarterbacks behind the worst offensive line with the worst offensive coordinator. So, I mean, it's like, yeah, we had a car and it's like, all oh, the, like the tires are good. And the, I don't know, I'm not a car guy, whatever. The tires are good. The interior is good. <laughs> Uh, the brakes are good, but there's no engine. There's no engine. So almost all the rest of it became irrelevant. But now Aaron Rodgers does two things. Number one, he's better than Zach Wilson, Tim Boyle, and Trevor Simeon. I know hot takes on a Friday. Some people don't like to hear these things, but, uh, but Aaron Rodgers makes the team better. 
we did a phase last year where it's like not even Aaron Rodgers could come in and be better. It's like, guys, come on, stop. Um, so you do that, and then you improve the offensive line, and then just by just by probability, you cannot have the same amount of offensive line injuries. If we do, then we're screwed. There's not there's nothing you can do. You can't roster 12 starting caliber offensive linemen. So if we do, then we're kind of screwed. But <clears throat> so you should have improved uh quarterback play, you should have improved offensive line play. You should go from bottom three in both of those spots to above league average in both of those spots. And then Rogers doesn't nullify Hackett. Like having a bad OC is ha- it's just it's just a bad thing, right? I'm not gonna oh well. Hackett was good when he had Rodgers. No, 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 Hackett sucks, and he just sucks. It is what it is. But Rocker, Rodgers mitigates Hackett's suckiness to some extent. So, really, you improve at quarterback, offensive line, and offensive coordinator because Aaron Rodgers is basically a quasi-offensive coordinator on the field. So you go from bottom three in all those spots to, to significant improvements. That's why, like, as bad as it was, it's really just – those spots that were bad and those spots have been improved, at least on paper. Yeah. And you go BPA in the draft, get a good player, get a good offensive player. No one's going to care. No one's going to care. Oh, you have to do this. You have to take Brock Bowers or the world's going to end. You can't take Brock Bowers. Or the world will end, dude. I, if you take him and he's good, we're going to love it. If we take him and he's not good, we're not going to like it. Like, can you think of one player that the Jets have drafted in recent memory that is freaking awesome at football and we're bummed that we took them. No, because you don't even think about it. Like, I don't know who's who got taken after Sauce. I don't know. None of them are better at football than Sauce. Sauce is probably the best player in the draft. So maybe that's not a good example, but or someone who got taken over after Brees. Like I I, I don't care. Maybe there was an edge that that's better than Jermaine that got taken. I, you don't you don't go back and look at it. You go back and look at when you take a freaking bust. You go back and you look at oh we could have had Worfs instead of Becton, or we could have had Panay Sewell instead of Zach Wilson, or we could have had whoever instead of Denzel Mims. Right? We could have had you know Patrick Mahomes instead of Jamal Adams, who wasn't a hit. I guess wasn't a bust with the Jets, but still. When you get a freaking awesome player, you don't go back and, and do that because you don't care. You're just glad that you got an awesome player. That's how we're all going to feel. So we'll hash it out. I'll give my opinions on these prospects, but get a freaking awesome offensive player. I will not care. If Brock Bowers comes out and he's like does what Sam Laporta did for the Lions last year, and he's a top five tight end immediately, I'm not going to care. I'm not going to care about what we missed on. Unless we have 20,000 offensive line injuries and Rodgers is dead, <laughs> then I guess I'll care. But there's nothing you can do about that anyway. You, you can't mitigate that with one draft pick anyway with a rookie. Yeah, man. Thanks for the super chat, Mike. Very generous of you, brother. Appreciate that. For running back two, you want Kareem or Zeke? Yeah, I didn't. Um, how did Kareem do last year? I wanted cream last year over cook. Um, <clears throat> I know he's been a pretty good receiving back. I just had all those bre- I had all those Zeke points on deck because I know people it's not even that I want Zeke. Like it doesn't, it's just that it doesn't matter. Is it interesting how people get so certain names or like buzz names for people like, no, <laughs> no, not Zeke, please don't do it. He might pick up a blitz and not fumble. I, Rivka says John Abraham was a mayor run defender. Well, Rivka, you wrote a you wrote you wrote a slanderous piece against Brock Bowers that triggered a lot of people that I saw. Good for you though for sticking your chest out there, sticking your pen to, opinion out there, Rivka. Um, MG's MJD MJ Dunn. I can't read. I can't wait till the draft so we can finally all stop guessing. Yeah, it, it like. What surprise you got? What's the most surprising name? Put it in the comments. Like, what's the most surprising name that you think is possible? Like, what's your hottest Jets take that's not like completely out of the realm of possibility? I guess after Will McDonald, like you, you there's really nothing that would shock us, right? They could take a defensive tackle and we'd be like, all right, well, 
they took one without them. Uh, I need a new, I need a better chair. I need a more comfortable chair. Another super chat. Mike D is funding the new chair fund. Getting too old. Williams injury stuff is a bit inflated. Look at the games per year. OBJ would be great. Number three, depending on the contract. Well, look, Mike Williams is 30 years old, going to be 30 years old coming off of an ACL. So that is very, that's concerning, but he hasn't missed a ton. He hasn't missed a crazy amount of time due to injuries. He leaves games a lot because the way he plays, he just jumps and puts his life and live on the line. So, his snap percentage has been around like 75% of the snaps pre ACL, but it's not like he's Blake Cashman. It's not like he's David Bakhtiari. Um, and, and it's baked into his contract. The contract details haven't been released yet, but I'm assuming it's going to be less than probably around eight to 10 million in base. If he didn't have the injury history, he would have gotten a three year, you know, whatever Gabe Davis got three year, 50 million, something crazy like that. So that's why I do wonder if they would double dip. They they better take a receiver with with one of their first two picks. I want those first two picks spent on offense. Yeah, OBJ would be a fine number three. Now, I, I mean, as long as he understands he's the number three, um, and as long as his, you know, I think he has enough respect for Rogers to where maybe he wouldn't do any antics. I think last year, if he had to endure the, the, um, Tim Boyle and Zach Wilson and Trevor Simeon experience, then Odo Beckham Jr. probably would have started doing some Odo Beckham Jr. things. So it's probably for the best that we didn't sign him last year. <clears throat> but look, he still averaged 16 yards per catch and um, 4.8 yak yards per reception, which are both in the 90th percentile, even though he only had less than 600 yards. I will say he played 14 games. And the Ravens had the second fewest amount of passing attempts in the NFL. So, yeah, he could come in and, and put up 600 yards and catch four or five touchdowns. Um, just how much are you willing to pay for that? Because he hasn't been like really good since before COVID. It's like 2019. He had a thousand yards in Cleveland. So you got to kind of know what you're getting. I think some people still just obsess over the name. We got to get Odell. But stylist and skill wise, he does provide some things that some other of these veteran wide receivers don't. Um, he can play all three positions, which Tyler Boyd can't. He still does give you some juice and speed and in, in, in the act that like these guys like Reynolds or Tyler Boyd just don't. So if Otto Beckham Jr. was durable and you know was just a, a choir boy, <laughs> he'd probably be my number one choice if the guy's left. And I'm not trying to I'm I'm not trying to say like he's some horrible person, but He's got a little bit of the div the wide receiver diva in him. Okay. He just does. It's, you know, it, they, they can't help it. Like Stefan Diggs, they did they all do. It's just how is he good enough for you to tolerate that? And maybe he's not anymore. It's interesting. Like just playing the wide receiver position just brings it's just it's funny how that works. Rivka says, do you think the Jets like Jarp and our converse in the Ashton Davis rule? Um, they could. I, I, I would like to re-sign Ashton Davis, and I would like for um look, safety play is is has to be interchangeable in 2024, right? So I think like the old days of you know, like what was it, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers when they had um Rondé Barber and John Lynch. And that was like the epitome of strong safety and free safety where the strong safety was almost like a linebacker and the free safety was like a, a defensive back and rangy. And, but now you really, you really have to be able to do both. And the, the teams that have really good safety tandems, like with the bills, the last six years of Poy Poyer and Hyde who are both now elsewhere, 
they're interchangeable, right? Um, but that being said, I, I think Jarp and our Converse would probably be more suited to back up Tony Adams as the quote unquote free safety and Ashton Davis backing up Chuck Clark as the quote unquote strong safety. I think Ashton is a little, still better playing downhill. Um, and I want to bring back Ashton Davis because he's a core special teamer and he's a high quality backup. And, and what are we talking for Ashton Davis? What two years, six, seven million with three million a year? I, I would bring back Ashton Davis, especially with Chuck Clark coming off of the um the injury. That should be a comp open competition. Ashton Davis might beat Chuck Clark out. I don't know. I don't even know if I don't even know if uh, again, I know it's not they don't play the same exact position, but I don't even know if Tony Adams is better than Ashton Davis. I really don't. I love Tony Adams, and I've been highly critical of Ashton Davis, but I'm just saying maybe I don't know, maybe I was wrong. I don't know. I'm looking at last year. Looking at last year, I don't have evidence that Tony Adams is better at football than Ashton Davis in the year 2024. I just don't. I think they'll I think they'll re-sign Ashton Davis. Because the safety market, I thought maybe they'd be priced out. Someone would take a shot at him as a starter, but the safety market has been so dirt cheap. Uh, even Simmons, like Simmons, look, Simmons would be nice, but I'm telling you guys, Simmons is right around. I think, I just think you'd be paying him for what he's already done and not what he's going to do. And I think Simmons days as an elite safety are probably over, you know? Now is Simmons better than Tony Adams and better than Chuck Clark and better than Jared Bernard? Of course, of course he is, but it is he better enough to justify signing him over Clowney or over, uh, you know, another wide receiver or over uh, the offensive line depth you can get with that money. I don't know about that. Dude, Mike, jeez, Appreciate that, man. Uh, yeah, unnecessary, but definitely really appreciate it, dude. Uh, Garrett Wilson, Williams, Otto Beckham, Brees, and maybe Bowers would be bonkers. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, could you imagine? Then you'd have, then you'd have the you'd have the decision. Okay, do we play? When you play eleven, you have Beckham out there, and then when you play twelve personnel, you have Conklin out there. I'm still in the Tyler Conklin fan club, man. Was it like is Tyler Conklin a top 10 or 12 tight end? You'd say no. And I would say name like 12 better. And you'd say, well, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Tight end is a there's a like three or four great ones, and there's a big drop off. And Tyler Conklin is right in that second tier. And considering what he did last year with the how horrible the offense was, and furthermore, with Nate Hackett not even caring about that tight ends exist. So Man, yeah, Bowers is um, <sighs> I I don't know, man. Look, he's he's freaking awesome, and he's gonna be the first tight end taken, and he's probably gonna be the highest tight end drafted since Kyle Pitts, right? Because I don't think a tight end has gone top twenty since Kyle Pitts that I can remember, um, and deservedly so. You know, he's going to be a top 20 pick. He'll probably go to like the Colts at wherever they are, like 16 or something like that. Um, and it'll be a nice weapon for them. I just think I like, I like, uh, well, I like all three of the top receivers better. Now, obviously, Harrison Jr. and neighbors, we probably won't be able to even take them, but I, I would take Odunze over Bowers. And I like Joe Walt. I like Olu Fashanu. And I like JC Latham better than. Bowers for the Jets. So, and that's not a knock on Bowers. That's just this is an awesome offensive line and wide receiver class. And I just think there's a little bit more certainty with some of those guys. But if you're telling me we traded down, well, if you're telling me we took Bowers at 10, I'm going to be excited because he's fun. He's a, he's a nasty yak weapon. His yak ability is insane. But there's a couple of things that you, that I, I've noticed a trend with pass catchers coming from college to the NFL. And I'm not saying that Bowers is just a yak merchant, but he's a little bit of a yak merchant. And 
the, this is why I didn't love Traylon Burks because he was too. And it's like, oh my god, but look at him, he's so athletic. Look at the plays making, they can't catch him. You could do a you could do a, a sweep, you could do this. You could... It's like, dude, I don't like the yak merchants, I don't like the contested catch merchants merchants. It's like, can you run silky, swift, nasty routes and get separation? Like that is a number one thing for me with the pass catchers. Um and when I watched this film. I didn't see that as on a consistent basis as I did with the other pass catchers. Now, uh, compared to the other tight ends, yeah, he's the best tight end in the class. It's not close. I mean, the kid from Texas will probably go in like the second round. So I feel like it's I've almost become a Brock Bowers hater just because I don't like the, the people who love Brock Bowers. Like, man, they don't want to hear anything. Like, they don't want to. They're like, he could play quarterback. He could punt for you. He'll marry your sister and treat her well. And it's like, all right, man, I, he's a very good football player. I'm just saying there's like five, there's like probably three or four names that'll be there at 10 that I would rather have than Brock Bowers. But if you trade down, you're telling me the Raiders, the Raiders want a quarterback, you slide down to 13, whatever, you, you turn pick 13 into Brock Bowers in a third round pick, that's fine. Um, He just wouldn't be my number one choice. But I think the Colts would be fun because you have him in that, like the mobile quarterback and just kind of like a different style of football, that'd be fun. But we'll see. Appreciate the super chat, man. Yeah, like that. I mean, just in a va- if if I could turn off injuries on Madden, yeah, his sign Odell Beckham Jr. and draft Brock Bowers, and you know, uh, Mike Williams and Tyron Smith are gonna play the whole year. Oh my gosh! In that scenario, then Brock Bowers would be the best resource on location. The Bo Nix rumors. So, what are the rumors? I know that we they attended his workout. Shh. Dude, if they take Bo Nix at 10, I don't even know if Bo Nix is going to be a good. That's not even my opinion. I just I'm not men, I'm not mentally prepared for a first round quarterback. I'm not mentally prepared for that. So I can't even like get my head around that possibility. <laughs> oh man. Let's see. How many people did I tick off with Brock Bowers? With my Brock Bowers hates. <coughs> um, he'll probably go to the Jets and be awesome and then. You guys can clown me forever. It's fine. First, it's two picks wide receiver running back. No, I don't think running back two is that serious of a need. Well, first of all, Izzy might be running back two. I don't know. Um, dude, running back two or dime a dozen, man. Go peel off two or three million or go draft one in the sixth round. You know. Who did Mahomes have a wide receiver? Uh, okay, so that's the argument that, that wide receiver is not like a super important position. I mean, okay, I think that's that's kind of pointing to the exception to prove the rule, right? I think wide receiver being good at wide receiver is definitely very important in the NFL, and like multiple really good pass catchers have been a staple of contending teams the past you know decade. But yeah, if you have Mahomes, if you have the best, if you have uh, the best quarterback in the NFL in his prime, with probably the best coach right now in Andy Reid, with a good offensive line, a top five defense, a top five special teams, and maybe the best defensive coordinator in the NFL, and one of the top five tight ends of all time, yeah, you probably could get away with not being good at receiver, right? But for everybody else, you know, that I don't look at the Chiefs and say. Well, see, it's that easy, you know, and let's remember that they did, um, you know, they did go to their first two Super Bowls with Tyreek Hill as well. Um, and the Chiefs recognize that that's probably not a super repeatable thing. That's why they signed Hollywood Brown. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if they don't take a, and I wouldn't be surprised if they take a wide receiver in the first round of the draft. Oh, Corey Davis? Yeah, I would resign Corey Davis. Why not? Um, you could be a wide receiver three or four. I mean, if he's in football shape, he's better than Lazard. We we all know that. We watch those two play. We all know he's better than Lazard. It's not saying much, but...
Right now we have like nine million in cap space. So and we have to sign the draft class. So if we're gonna sign another free agent of note, I think they would they would have to do a restructure somewhere. Didn't Irv Charles do well replacing Hardy last year? So uh I know that Irv Charles, they they called him the special teams wolf, so I think he does have some potential as a as a gunner. Now I do know in the games that Hardy missed, there was right away there was like a couple of punts, um, returns that like popped. But do I did do I remember off the top of my hand if like off the top of my head if if Charles was responsible for those? I don't. I just do remember noticing. Oh wow, Hardy's gone. Now these punt returns are are happening. So I don't know if that was causation or correlation, but you know, or if Charles do, they do like him as a special teamer. Mr. Green Jeans has great offseason, multiple one-year contracts, good and bad with that, and need quality drafting to replace old guys. Yeah, you got you got us like we have a pick in the third round. We got two picks in the fourth round. You got to get some starters here, man. You got to get some guys who can start by year two in these mid rounds at some point. Otherwise, you're right. The 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 cupboard will be bare because we got some band aids for this year. Appreciate that, Dane. Yeah, I forget. Yeah, the membership, you know. You can donate me a cup of coffee a month if you want by clicking one of those buttons down there, but um or you can hit the like button for free, or you get the thumbs down button, which is also free. It is America. It's funny when I started the stream, somebody immediately for as soon as I clicked start, somebody immediately opened it and hit thumbs down. I'm like, damn, bro, I didn't even say anything yet. I guess that guy didn't like my face. Uh, Tyler Conklin was a beast last year. Tyler Conklin had a very sneaky good year, man. He made a lot of really good catches. He's got really good hands. He's not an he's got he's not an elite athlete. He's got very little yak ability, but he makes the most of his athleticism. And again, his hands are really impressive. I like Conklin a lot. I'm probably higher on Conklin than most Jeff fans. What's up, Knobcraft? For me, it's the plantar. Who's got plantar fasciitis? What's up, Harry? Boycott activity says Bowers is the obvious pick. If they don't go O line, Bowers can play receiver. Um, yeah, I mean he did. They did split him out wide. They used him as an H back. Um, they you now at at the NFL level, he would be able to play slot, right? I don't think he's gonna play X or Z receiver at the NFL level, but he could he's essentially a big slot, right? I mean that's what Kincaid was for the Bills, but they're 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 different stylistically. But you know, Steve says Bowers is the third best player in the draft. Hmm. Yeah, it seems like there's not a ton of middle ground on uh on old Brock Bowers. I think I'm in the middle ground. Harry, yeah, Harry says Hackett won't know how to use Bowers. That's, you know, something else you have to unfortunately consider. Nicknamed the Bowers Boys. Yeah, I've seen that on in the internet. I don't know who started that calling them the Bowers Boys, but um, 
Yeah, it is kind of becoming a little bit of a. It's a squad, man. It's assembling. MJ Dunn says the thing he remembers most about Corey Davis is the blocking. Yeah, I think Corey Davis is a better blocker than Alan Lazard. They're both good blockers, but Lazard will lay people out like he has some like actual pancake blocks. But I think just technically on a down in down out basis, Corey Davis is a more consistent blocker than Lazard. Super chat from Panda Ball. We should trade up and go get alt. What would you be willing to do? Um, you know, would I would I trade up to five and trade next year's first to get alt? No, there's nobody I would do that for. Even Marvin, even Marvin Harrison Jr. You know, I wouldn't trade next year's first to go get Marvin Harrison Jr. or Malik Neighbors personally. Um, now. If he's there at seven or eight, and you could just take your first two picks and take, ah, two, I don't even know if I would do that. Now they have Smith. Um, I'd consider it. You know, if it was there at like eight, we could come up and send seventy-two and just get. You know, you're most confident you're going to get like a Debrickashaw Ferguson level left tackle in the next ten years. I would do it, but I'm not going crazy to go up and get anybody at this point, just because there's going to be a good player there at ten. I'd be more willing to trade back than um, trade up, personally. But uh, if you're that confident that he's, you know, the, the gap between him and the rest of the offensive line is that significant and you you lock down and, and he does turn into Brickershaw Ferguson, then it's a good trade. But I appreciate the um, super chat, man. But I'll leave it there. Thanks for hanging out, guys. You have a great weekend. Go Jets.